Uh, so these mag so here here's a magnetic uh, coil actually yeah. the, the, forget that it doesn't actually look like that there's two magnets on here there, there's one that, there's one that we call the solenoid and so that's that's wound around like this and then there's two lines going into it all right and that's going to create a field up, up this way all right yep. now at the same time we want to apply a field this way too I can't have two solenoids like because they can't intersect each other mm -hmm. so. I have another thing, which is called a split coil. So I have the coil here and a coil here, and these are connected up there. Mm -hmm. These are like Hamilton's coils. Remember? So these create a field going this way, and this creates a field going up. Yeah. All right. This is solenoid split. All right. So and then, as Jean just explained, there are two different controls in the boxes, so I can simultaneously control each one of these. Now. Uh, in order to get a field, the, a field, I just need to send a current down into each one of these yeah. separately, and that'll control what my field is. All right. Um, these are superconducting magnets, though, so uh, you can all you could also um, uh, essentially trap a, uh, a current in here. So imagine you had a bridge run, uh, some, or a, a, a line, superconducting line, which bridged this. I could get a current to be trapped around in this loop mm -hmm. that was going all the way around all the time. And just maintain that field, and then I don't even need a power source in there to do that. I just trap it in. So the issue is, how do I? I need some sort of switch here to, to that will open and close. So some sort of switch to make a contact. Yeah. Between and it will either will uh, will short this line out so this current so it can circulate around this way, or will be open and I can send current in and out. So the easy way to make a switch is just to have a a, a line a superconducting line here, and have a. Uh, uh, a heater, uh, a heater on here. So I have a little resistor here mm -hmm. that's connected to this. And so, uh, if I send a current, heating current here, this will heat this up and make it non-superconducting. All right. So if, I, if this heater is on, then this line has some resistance. This line has no resistance. Any current which goes down goes down mm -hmm. through here and back out. All right. If I start, turn the heater off, this line has no resistance. These lines up here have some resistance, and this current gets trapped. All right. So the the bottom line is, whenever I'm changing the current that I want to go through here, I'm changing the magnet, sweeping the magnet vapor. I want to have this heater on. All right. Because this heater heater's off, it's send current down. It's just going to go in here, and back yeah, out. Yeah. It's not going to go through this coil. All right. So most of the time, whenever I'm actually running the magnet, I want to have the heater on. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there are times when I want to put this up at some field. So I have the heater on. I put this up to some field. I switch this off, and then I trap that current in the yeah. loop, and then I have, it, then I have the, the, uh, the current down there. I can turn off my power supply, it doesn't matter. Right. So I, I gotta have like, uh, you know, 20 amps or what, whatever the maximum current is, these things. Just circulate around in here, I don't need any power supply or anything yeah. like that, do that. But the, the bottom line is most of the time when we're running the magnet, like the experiment when you're now, we're gonna be sweeping the field. So in order to do that, you need to have the heater on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set things up, and we're gonna make sure that, you know, the power supply is working. We can just send current down through here without sending it through the magnet. Sure. And then when things are working, uh, we'll, we'll put a set it at zero current, turn the heater on, and start ramping up the current. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very important to first to, to try out with this shunt on, so without actually sending current to, to the magnet. Because uh, if you have like accidentally a large uh, current jump, uh, like, then it, it, it could induce some kind of uh, 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 this uh, crunch for this magnet, but but if if that's just uh, the superconducting shunt, then that's okay. Yeah, if, I mean this the superconducting magnet can withstand a lot of currents. The issue is that things change very suddenly. Um, I mean there are issues about inductance and stuff as well. Yeah. Then uh, you can you could essentially if there were no protection on the magnet, you could make the magnet resistive. It would get under the superconducting transition. All of a sudden, all this current going down the resistive line it heats up and it melts the magnet. Now, in practice, there are actually diodes and things like that protecting it. And so what will happen is those will heat up instead. But if you accidentally, like, for example, uh, uh, turn on or, or turn on or turn off the field or ramp up or ramp down the current too quickly, um, you'll do what's called quenching the matter, which is basically making some part of the circuit resistive. Mm -hmm. And all that current you're sending down is going to go into that resistance. That's going to heat up. It's in the bath right now. That'll heat up the entire bath. And then it'll basically turn all that liquid helium into gas. And then you have all that liquid turns into gas in that doer, yeah. and all of a sudden the pressure is going to build up to a rather large amount. Okay. And so, if you're lucky, what you'll see is just like 
the recovery line will just go crazy and go nuts and run like that. So that recovers. This pop up valve is going to go off as well. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're unlikely, it will start to break things with the pressure pump. Uh, and I know that uh, they accidentally punched the magnet on that one, and they, they broke out basically a gasket on, on some place that they had to uh, replace and things like that. So, like, so the, the, it'll the bottom line is, it'll well, it's, it's, turning, it's turning a lot of, it, it won't, I don't think it'll explode, I don't think it'll hurt you. Uh, it'll definitely hurt the magnet, yeah, and, yeah. and uh, it'll definitely hurt the, it could hurt the doer. And let's, let's just pretend right now that <clears throat> that's worth more than you are. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the idea is uh, we want to be careful when you're doing things. So you, want avoid, you want to avoid critical current? You want to avoid... The, of the magnet. Well, the, the critical... Right. So one, one thing is you don't want to put too much current down into the magnet more than it's rated for. Yeah. The other thing is you don't want to ramp it too fast. So either one of those two things... They both make it resistant. They both make it resistant. Yeah. For, we're going to be dealing with pretty small fields, I think. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. But uh, uh, So you... With the fields you're dealing with, unless we make some sort of mistaken calculation, because you must turn it down accidentally, that should be a problem. You, you can still try ramping too fast, but even if you have really fast up to a kilogauss, probably wouldn't make a bunch of bullets. Mm -hmm. So the reason that superconducting is so we avoid uh, heat? Well, you, you can't. Uh, well, was, if, if we just use the Nazi unit of magnet, we do it. What, heat up? You, you, well, you can. Yeah, you hear right. And number two, you, if you want to make a high magnetic field, the better, uh, the easier way is to have a super okay. not your line because it's going to be able to carry a lot more current in general. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, standard way now. Right? 